So the more time I spend with something, the better I get. So, you know, cutting very particular objects out uh, for collage, you know, that's, that's improved over time. And something that I even learned, you know, we were talking about Dennis Rowan earlier, but I know that part of his practice is meticulously cutting out um, images from found books or um, catalogs or old, you know, publications. And that's something that I've grown to understand how to do better um, and messed up a ton before that became something that felt easy. I've always really enjoyed, you know, part of the process of just even finding things to work with, with collage and mixed media. You know, the art of kind of digging and looking through the different, you know, even the tactility of different types of papers and things that you can come across um, and how those are gonna interact. And, you know, working with different papers and, you know, glues and all, the, all of those things, how they change the final image. And that's just, I think over time, of you know, the more you spend with something, the more you realize the things that work for you and don't, and what you like working with, and you know how they behave. Uh, Lara Orr, um, textile artist, uh, collage artist, parent, community member. I guess as a child, I was always interested in. I don't know, making things and doing things and being very active. Um, I was able to participate, I grew up in Urbana, and I was able to participate in the University of Illinois um, Saturday Art Program, which I totally loved. My parents always thought it was hilarious that I would give up Saturday morning cartoons um, to go make art. And so I guess that's, those were some of my first earliest memories of actively trying to, you know, understand a process or learn about materials or engage in, you know, somebody presenting a design problem in some capacity and creating something from that. Um, so I did that predominantly, I would say, I think it was through middle school. Um, and then I was also very active in sports. And so I kind of had to choose um, if I was going to continue with art in high school or sports. And I chose sports. <laughs> So I didn't actually take any art classes through high school, um, which is kind of strange because then as I went to, I went to the University of Wash U and I um, transferred into the art school there. And so I felt a little, as like kind of a coming home, but it was also very intimidating because I had not been actively practicing art um, for about five years. WashU is a smaller school, and so quickly it became a really comfortable kind of family. You know, there weren't classes were really small, um, and just started in a very general kind of art education in that sense, where you had to take two-dimensional design, three-dimensional design, drawing, life drawing, figure drawing, um, and so it was there that I kind of fell into. Um, I studied fashion design at, in school, and um, really had my first taste of printing with textiles, dyeing with textiles, learning about different fabric types, learning about different fibers, um, just how they behaved. Um, and I still remember to this day, because now that I'm practicing and making with textiles again, that my favorite class at that time was um, a textile design course where we were dyeing and printing. and. I always was wondering how I could incorporate that more into the design and the making and the sewing. Um, but at that time, it just I, I was either too afraid, didn't really take the plunge, or I wasn't really sure how to make that happen. So um, they, they remained pretty separate for me. The idea of like printing or making your own textiles to then use for garments or goods or things like that. It took a long time for me, I guess, to figure out how to take what I was interested in and figure out how that manifested as an art process. And I don't really think it was until I became a parent that there were things that I felt really a very, a, a clarity of like, this is important to do, this is important for me to explore, 
and this isn't how I know how to do that. It's not, you know, for me it's not um, writing um, that doesn't come as easily or it's not maybe, you know, photography as an art form or expression. So it has, it really has kind of um, the direction that I've taken, I think, in figuring out that voice has been more in two-dimensional, mixed media, more abstract. I got inspired, I found um, a collection of images from, it's like an old science publication that was all this like, you know, zoomed in um, under the microscope, looking at like, I don't know, different organisms. And so a lot of those images were just really like graphically super rich. There were a lot of them were just black and white and there was repetitive shapes, um, really interesting line quality. And for me, a lot of that also pulled me back into thinking about map making and terrain. And um, I spent a lot of time backpacking and camping and doing some outdoor education. And I just always, uh, topographical maps always interested me for their, for the line quality and that, um, just the colors that were used. And so I think there was, a, for me, that initial like connection between exploring um, more traditional map making and then my interest in color and texture. And a lot of these works, I was kind of beginning to explore again um, blind contour drawings, which is another process that I enjoy because it really takes the object out of any kind of um, I guess the proportions that aren't, you know, they don't make any sense, they overlap, um, they almost take on a map making quality when you're drawing with a blind contour drawing, um, which is where you're not looking at what you're doing, you're looking, you're focusing on your object and your pen, pencil, whatever you're using does not leave the page. And so you kind of end up with these really crazy out of proportion, stretched, elongated, um, overlapped drawings, which for me is a really great way to segue into um, like maps and map making and territories and textures. Um, and so that was something I was really interested in exploring again. So these were all these like things that I had experienced in different ways, you know, more isolated, like, you know, maybe in a class I'd only, we'd only done uh, blind contour drawings, or maybe we had only explored, you know, mixing or drawing with colored pencils. And so finally kind of figuring out on my own, you're like, all right, these are things that I enjoy doing as a singular entity, so now I want to bring them all together with these experiences and interests that I've had since you know, first learning about the process. I started doing some sewing on, so there's a lot of those, there's, um, and those I just, I would put, you know, use the paper in the sewing machine and kind of, I was really interested in the, just the way in which that line behaved versus a very controlled, um, specific, like I was using colored pencils in a very heavy way. So the, the color almost seemed um, like it was painted on or it was, you know, not of a colored pencil because it was, you know, the wax started to kind of come through and it became very shiny and very solid. Um, and you didn't really notice, there was no evidence of the stroke in that way of using the colored pencil, whereas using a sewing machine line, it's very apparent where it's coming from. All of the, you know, lengths are measured in the same, and it's very evident. And so those two, for me, that juxtaposition of kind of like very controlled, very out of control, um, lines and I was I was started to get really interested in kind of those um, the contrast my older son Arlen still really loves to make things draw create um, we spend a lot of time in the studio together and I think that's also been a motivator for me to keep my practice up and going is that he gets really inspired by watching and seeing and I think he learns a lot. We were able to do a show over at Common Ground Food Co-op together. What we really wanted to focus on was um, kind of collaborative process and that because he was really fascinated by some of the techniques that I was doing and I really wanted to share that with him. So I tried to set up experiences where there was a lot of shared making going on where 
Um, so one time we, I had a lot of paper that I had that was I was doing um, off prints on from stamps, and so they kind of had shapes that were already on them. And you know, part of the part of it was engaging what was on the paper. So how are you going to use the shapes that are on the paper? And we would work independently, and then I'd be like, all right, okay, now we're going to switch. And when we switch, it's now no longer your work. So whatever happens, you have to be okay with it. It's like you have to kind of disconnect from everything you just did and now work with all the images that are happening on the page. And you can't get mad at the other person for whatever they're doing. So challenging a little bit of that ownership um, and outcome. And then another process we tried was, um, you know, I was like, all right, you find five collage pieces, items that you are excited about, and I'll do the same. And we're not going to look, right? We're, not, we're going to try to do a little anonymous, and then we are going to trade. And then you have to use all of those pieces in your in a drawing. I've always kind of had an interest in sharing some of the process and some of my direction and and making with um, youth and kids, and they they have a lot less uh, preconceived notions about what things should look like at a certain age point, um, and so I kind of like tapping that resource and encouraging them to see contemporary artists, female artists, um, artists of color, you know, work that's actually being made now performance art, so kind of tapping a little bit more in the, the range of art making and sharing that, whereas I think, especially when I was growing up, it was a lot more of the masters and, you know, we always joked about the, the dead white guys and all the work they did. And so really trying to explore beyond that in ways that like, you know, how can you make a practice out of now and what you're seeing now or how you're feeling now, what's happening now in the world. Um, and so that was a big motivation. And so we were able to turn in uh, the studio space in our basement into a functioning kind of camp workspace for students. And it was a really great exploration. I mean, students, I felt like they really had a chance to um, dig into some of the materials. It was really fun to see which students, you know, got into certain, you know, pra practices. I was, I got a, um, one week we dove into weaving and the students were really into um, that, I don't know, that meditative process a little bit, it seemed like. Uh, so that was really exciting because I wasn't sure. I mean, I don't, I'm always, you know, as another form of textiles, weaving has always been something that I've been very interested in. So it was kind of fun to see the students explore that. And we kind of all had to learn that together a little bit. I was like, well, I've never really taught anyone how to work on a hand loom, but I guess we're going to figure that out. And um, that was really, they really got into it. I mean, a lot of them wanted to make more, you know, do it again. And I was like, that's a good sign.